Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting, and we are working on the chapter one problem from group B, um, number 38. So let me get there. All right, so we're on 38. So if you watch the, uh, the first video, you see, you know, a little bit of theory about this problem, and now we're going to actually work through the problem. And again, if you don't understand something, watch the videos again, and if you still I don't understand something, feel free to contact an instructor, okay? So the first thing we're going to do here is, is we're going to prepare the income statement. Now, I'll work on a blank screen. And remember, I'm taking shortcuts here. Um, the reality is, is you don't abbreviate. You know, make sure that the formatting is correct. Um, you know, things like that. And I've, I've spoken about that in other videos. So... Um, I have McKnight Inc. here, and the, this is my income statement, and it is either for the period ending or, um, in this case here, for the year ending. Now, um, that's December 31, 2014. Okay, notice in the, uh, the solution they just wrote year ended. Okay, and then the date. Okay, um, that's fine. Um, as long as we can identify the uh, accounting period or, you know, what the period is. Um, but most often, you're going to use the words for the, okay, as part of the uh, heading date, okay? Most often use for the and then whatever the period happens to be and ending. Um, it's not, you know, one is not more right or, or more wrong. Um, this one is just, a, you know, causes a little bit less confusion. Um, but what you don't want to do is you just don't want to put only the date, okay? Putting only the date is used for uh, the balance sheet, right? Because it's as of, you know, it's the balance in those ledger accounts as of that specific date. But for remember, for the income statement and the statement of retained earnings, though, both are for the period of time, right? So the first thing is I'm going to put the heading, all right? And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write revenues, and I'm going to write expenses. Okay, um, because they're my two categories of accounts. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in any ledger accounts that pertain to those uh, categories. So in this case here, I um, I will indent, all right, and right service and I'm abbreviating revenues you need you should write it all out okay now I as I uh, look at my accounts here I only have this one service revenue account right so I could have done this you know two different ways I I could have just gone and began with service revenue and that would have been just fine. I'd put the amount over here, okay? And then the next thing I would do is I would put expenses. I would write the category expenses, and I would then list the, uh, the various expenses. But get used to doing it one way, and my, you know, the suggested way is by putting revenues, because what we're doing here is we're trying to build a process that's repeatable all right, in your mind, right? If you keep doing it one way, and, and honestly, this is the most common way, even though we only have one ledger account here, um, this is the, the most common way it's done. You know, you're, you're not going to be wrong. And, and then if you do see the other way, like you, if you happen to look at a financial statement that has it, the way it looks in the uh, in the answers and the solution, where it just shows service expense, you're going to recognize. I'm sorry, not service expense, service revenue. 
um, you're going to recognize what that is, okay? And you won't be, you know, you won't be lost. But by doing the same thing again and again and again, you can build that um, muscle memory, you know, memory muscle as to exactly, you know, the process that you should be going through so that you don't miss anything and you get everything correct. So for my expenses, I had a salary expense and I had an insurance expense. And again, I'm abbreviating, but you should be writing these out. And I have advertising expense. Now, if I was doing a homework problem, you know, I would do what I'm doing. I would, you know, uh, take the shortcuts and not write everything out, okay? But that's knowing that if I was making a formal statement where I'm going to actually give it to somebody else, whether it's on a test or in the workplace, I would actually write everything out, okay? And then I'm indenting again and writing total expense. Total expenses. Now, um, in this problem, you know, we're actually going to um, run into the issues of multiple columns and doing calculations, right? Since we only have one uh, general ledger account for service revenue, that's going to go over in the, the far right hand column, and that's 88,000. Okay. Write a little bit nicer. 88,000. Okay. And since there's only one account, I don't need to have a total revenue here um, because all I'm doing is just adding up one number, right? So I don't really need the total revenue there. By just having, I can recognize that I have one account and that the total amount, you know, it's in, it's in the mo right hand most column. And notice I put the dollar sign there. But now when we come down to expenses, I have, you know, three different accounts that I'm, I want to have as a total expense. Okay. Notice I indented. And then for my total expense, I wrote that as an indentation also. But since I'm doing a mathematical calculation with more than one, uh, with more than two numbers, I'm going to move one column to the left write my dollar sign, and then write in the, those amounts. So it's 13000 for salary expense, 8000 for insurance expense, and 5500 for my advertising expense. And I'm going to draw an underline because why? It's a mathematical calculation. And I'm going to put the total of the calculation, the $26,500, in the right-hand right column. Okay, because why? This is the calculation, and the you know I stick the answer over there, and then that kind of like makes sense because if you 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 know what's on our income statement? We have revenues minus our expenses, right? Well, you can see this is my revenue amount, and this is my expense amount, and when I'm looking in this column, that's what I'm looking at. When I'm looking at this column, what I'm looking at is my total expenses, right? So I'm adding those up and I'm sticking it there. So when I look in one column, I can look and say, okay, this is my total expenses. I know that, that that's what this amount is. But when I'm looking at the overall picture of the financial statement, okay, I'm able to look down this right-hand column and say, okay, my revenues were 88, my total expenses were 26.5. And so then that gives me, you know, a net income of, and since this is the end of a calculation, I put in dollar sign, 61,500, okay, and I put my double underline showing that that's the end of the calculation, and there's my income statement, okay. Now, um, a thought did occur to me as I was working through this. You know, again, I'm doing this as a homework assignment, all right? Um, but it is not how I would actually create the financial statement. I mean, it's pretty close, all right? I mean, I am going to have, you know, my, uh, you know, I'm going to write in my heading here, you know, my categories here. I'm going to indent. I'm going to have my ledger accounts. And, of course, I'm going to write them all out. But I would also, instead of writing 88 thousand with three zeros, I probably would probably would just write, you know, a K, 
k uh, represents three zeros. So anywhere I saw that, um, I would end up writing 88k here. I would end up writing 13k here, 8k here, and that just makes uh, you know me for less. I understand what that is, and it, it, I just spend less time writing. Okay. I mean, that's what all accountants do. They use the K an awful lot. But this 5,500, I would write it out. I'd have to write it out completely, just like the 26,5 and the 61,5. Okay? Whenever you see the three zeros, you can substitute that with a, you know, with a big letter K in order to save yourself some time in writing out all of the zeros. Of course, when you actually create a presentable financial statement, you're going to have to put in all of the zeros. Okay? So that's the income statement, and uh, we're going to move on to the statement st statement of retained earnings. But before I go, um, I want you to realize that we created the income statement first because we need the $61,500 to be able to put it on our statement of retained earnings. If I tried to create the statement of retained earnings first, I have to go back and create the income statement because I don't know what my profit or loss is to be able to put it on my retained earnings. So bear in mind that we're going to need that 61.5 for the statement of retained earnings. And so with that, um, I'm going to stop here and pick up with the problem uh, doing the retained earnings in the next video.